G'day there. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be going over Tin Man's Cool Jewel Circuit. If I can get everything on screen for you. Okay. Now, I'd like to go over a couple of things first. Um, in uh, the replications I've seen, everyone's got their Cool Jewel running at about 1 milliamp. I'm using 3.6 volt NICAD battery packs here. These are really old ones from some cordless phones. They were really stuffed. They've been sitting in a drawer for years. They had zero volts on them a few days ago. I have recovered them using my windowsill charging system over there off the solar panels. I have then flattened one of them by leaving an LED on it for 24 hours. So I'll be using that one as the battery to be charged. That's been flattened. This one here with the green stripe, it is full and it will be the run battery. So one thing I'm going to do, one thing I have changed is I've put in a 50k potentiometer here. Sorry, 500 kilo ohm potentiometer. Because I'm running on the high voltage, I'm going to run at 1 milliamp the same as everybody else. So to do that, I'm going to measure my input amps with that meter there and get it tuned right. And then I'm going to replace this clip lead. So part of the re sorry, I'll replace this meter with the clip lead to make the connection. So part of the reason I've got this second meter here at the moment is to show you the input impedance on this meter when it's set to ohms. It does have a 2.4 ohm resistor in it, I believe it was, or 2.2. If I can get a good connection. That doesn't look right. Now that is interesting. Something's not right there. That'll be close enough. So we can see there that it says 2.4 ohms. Okay, so I don't think for when I, by the time I turn this pot up, 2.4 ohms is going to be a piddly amount, and this clip lead will replace it just fine. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about briefly is when you're doing these tests, if you leave your meters hooked up, you can interfere with the results. Um, I'll turn this one around 2 volts. These are both 10 mega ohm reset, um, impedance on the voltage range. They're fairly expensive meters. Most meters are much lower in their impedance, but I'll just show you that here. Okay, so we can see it's recorded showing over 10 mega ohms. That's auto ranged. I'll just get up close for you there. Hopefully you can see that. 11 mega ohms of input impedance for the voltage range. Now if you leave your meters hooked up all the time, that is a little bit of a load on the system. So you can throw your results out. So I'll be disconnecting voltage meters in between readings. So I'll only be connecting volt meters to make a reading and I'll be only using 10 mega ohm multimeters to do that. Okay, so now we've covered that, we can get on to doing the test. So I have this potential, I'm going to turn it all the way to 50 kilo ohms, as high as it goes. I will connect it to the link between the two batteries and to the positive input part of the circuit. I'll then switch it on. So. Oops. And, uh, I want to go back to milliamps. Obviously the circuit hasn't started yet because I need to press this button. And it's not going to start. There we go. Won't keep running on its own. We are getting 14 milliamps there if I hold the button down. Oops, and I forgot something I was supposed to check. I'll just have another look. I did note down my voltages before I started here. So my run battery had 4.0518 volts. 
and the battery had 3.5012 volts giving us a total of 7.5530 volts across both batteries. I will just check that quickly for you with this meter. So, run battery. Get a connection there. Yeah, you can see I have dropped it a little bit just from that quick test. And the battery to be charged. And again, it's dropped slightly. You can see it's recovering already from that little bit of a load. Okay. So, main thing here at the moment is I want to get this turned to a point where it will run. There it goes, we're off and running. And why aren't we showing any milliamps? That's with no resistance running. Clearly I've got some problems here. It's not showing any micro lamps either. And it stopped. And well, there we go. Okay, so with no resistance, did I turn that the wrong way? No, even with no resistance, that's tiny. I've got that resistor turned all the way down to zero to have that running. And we have 838 microamps. That is tiny. I'm very impressed. Tiny load. So you now that that's established, that's with zero resistance. We can ditch that so I can get my meter back for some other experiments. This is probably going to be running for a few days. I don't want to leave it there. I'll put that one in there. I'll start it again, the momentary switch, and we're off and running. Now that we are running, I'll take a reading off the two batteries. So we'll put the run battery on here. And you can see the voltage has dropped a bit. And I'll change this meter to volts, and my little stand's falling off. And I'll get that on the charge battery. And there we go, we can see that the run battery is going down and the charge battery is going up. I will make some notes of those voltages and add them to my little chart here and I will do an update video on this in a day or two when I have some results. Uh, the other thing I am noting is my temperature here in the top corner of this meter. Okay, it's actually just gone up a little bit since half an hour ago. I did start with, um, did that static reading at 22.6 degrees C, it is now 23.4 degrees C. So I'll be keeping notes of the temperature every time it changes more than a degree or so. Okay, I'll disconnect these before we cause too much circuit interference. And I will keep you guys posted on my results. Thanks for watching.